this ever be enough? Look, I just hurt my hand. I just hurt this hand that is already hurting. Oh Lord. Ouch. Ouch, 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 ouch. Ouch. When will this ever be enough? It's always something happening, huh? Always something. I am just running into this garden to see how I can vent my frustration from the doctor's office. And I'm instead hot again by bumping my hand in that container right there. Ouch. Ouch. But there is always going to be problems in this life. What matters now is your approach to problem solving. Okay, so granted, my doctor was trying to help me, isn't it? Because I've had this carpal tunnel syndrome bothering my life for over four to five years. I've tried every kind of remedy. It will not go. Including the use of splints of this nature. This is the only thing that used to work lately. These splints, I wear them in both of my hands before I go to bed. They've worked for a while, but out of a sudden they just stopped working which according to the doctor is an indication that my carpal tunnel was getting worse. So I finally accepted the suggestion to get the surgery. I know my doctor was helping but the approach in the last day hurt my feelings. What did they do? That really, really hurt my feelings. That I was coming into this garden to vent out. The day of the surgery was yesterday. I got to the waiting area with my two months old baby. Of course, my husband came with me because they said after the surgery, they wouldn't release me if someone was not there to take me home because I would still be partially sleeping from the anesthesia. So when they were ready for me, they said, oh, it's time to come into the theater. Give your baby to your husband and let's go. So I handed my baby over to my husband and went into the theater with them. When I came out of the theater, I only realized myself in the recovery room. And I realized the surgery was already done because I was probably asleep when the surgery was conducted. The first thing I noticed was my baby crying. So my immediate instinct was to pick up my baby. So I told my husband, give me my baby. He handed my baby to me and as I was cuddling my baby, the nurse walked up to me and said, oh, no, 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 no. That hand cannot stressed for the next two to three weeks until you come back and the dressing is taken out. I said, what does that mean? She said, hand your baby to your husband. You cannot be able to carry this baby in that hand until the dressing is taken out of your hand. I looked at her and I was like, you know what? I didn't know what to say. I was so embarrassed to hear that. You know what? Because I immediately thought to myself, they didn't tell me before this surgery that it was going to be to a point where I would not be able to carry my baby. Of course, I knew I was having a surgery, right? But they told me it was just going to be a three hours procedure and after that I would be able to go home. So I never thought that it was going to be a situation that would disable one of my hands to a point where I cannot carry my own baby. So. I looked at her and I was a little confused and I said, didn't you know I had a two months old baby? Didn't you see me in the waiting area with this two months old baby? She said, yes, I did. I said, okay, it would just have been nice of you to tell me that the surgery will incapacitate me. Are you sure you really want to have this surgery? Because after this surgery, you might not be able to pick up your baby for weeks. I was never told that. I bet you if I was told that this hand would be so disabled that I would not be able to pick up my baby, I would have postponed this surgery. I would have asked them to reschedule this surgery. I knew I needed the surgery, but believe me, there was no sense of emergency associated with this surgery. I've been going with this pain for years. I have been able to manage the pain a little with painkillers and splints like this. What mother 
with a two months old child would go without picking up her baby for two to three weeks. That is my point of frustration. If they had told me that this hand would be so disabled after the surgery that I would not be able to pick up my baby for two to three weeks, I would have told them, please hold on with that surgery until my baby is at least a year old. Okay, so my frustration is as a result of insufficient information by medical practitioners during my surgical procedure. Those are just examples of some of the things, of some of the negative things that we call garbage in our lives. Now, those are the things that a lot of people have difficulties managing in life. The garbage from doctor's office, from friends, from neighbors, from peers co-workers it's all over the place now the important thing is how do we manage such adverse situations how do we manage them do we allow them to overwhelm us what is your self-regulatory mechanism to handle this type of situations well you know what that is why i'm in this garden right now that's why i always run back to my garden whenever i'm frustrated i come back here to vent my frustration and seek comfort for my plants. When I'm so much in pain, I pick up one of my favorite plants. You know what, let me find one. The oregano, with that beautiful fragrance. Let me get my oregano. Ah. Oh. Ah. Oh. Ah. Oh. That will make me feel a little better. You know what, let me get my oh. How refreshing. That was so cool. I feel much better. You know what? I feel so sleepy right now. I'm just gonna go to sleep. I am just gonna lie down. I know by the time I get up from this sleep, my trouble will all be gone. I'll just go back to my house and I will just be my normal self again. Oh, friend, thank you so much. Mmm. Mmm. How soothing. to subscribe if you haven't done so yet and also share the video with members 
of your circle of friends so they can also start benefiting from what we are teaching in this channel. If you would like to be a sponsor of the Zero Garbage Club, do not hesitate to send us a quick email using that email address so that we can contact you for further information. Furthermore, if you would like to become a member of the Zero Garbage Club that brings people together from time to time in conventions where they can share their experiences about adverse situations in their lives and coping strategies using the remedy of the Zero Garbage household, then please do not also forget to send us an email so that we can send you information about club membership. Thanks so much. It was a pleasure. <laughs> Bye. Bye. See you in the next video. Now, if you do not have an outdoor space, you can also have plants as your friends indoor like this. This is all indoor. We have those outdoor, but in the inside, you can also create eye warming plant areas like this. These are collections of different desert plants, those that do not need a lot of water and do not need a lot of sunlight either. Aloe veras are very good indoor plants. The golden potho, of course, is very resistant to adverse growing conditions. The golden potho is a great indoor plant because it can survive poor lighting conditions for several months at a time without getting hot. I once tested this characteristic of the golden potho. I took a potted golden potho plant, kept it in a bathroom with very poor lighting conditions and it survived for over a year on hot. A bathroom that just had motion lights. The lights only come on when someone steps in the bathroom and turn off automatically once the person steps out. My golden potto survived in that bathroom. Under such poor growth conditions, make sure to water the plants less often. For over a year, the plant survived on earth. Indoor plants like this would be your friends as well. You can talk to them when you need someone to talk to. Treat them right. Be nice to them and they're going to be nice to you. Right? Just treat your plants right. Keep plants in your home. It doesn't have to be this many. But do your best to accommodate some plants in your home. Right? That's my indoor plant area. That is an indoor plant area in my house. In the winter, when I have no access to plants in the outdoor, I have this inside. So, my life and the life of my family revolves around plants as you can see.